Hello guys, hello guys. This video is about reading encoder measurements using STM32 microcontrollers. Encoders are mostly used along with motors, so you must have encoders if you want to precisely uh, control the the angular position and the angular velocity of the motor. And for this uh, video, I'm using this motor, uh, which is quite widespread and very affordable, I would say. So let me open this case. So it has a um, imbe embedded encoder um, uh, already to, to the motor. So here is a disk. I hope you can see clearly uh, on this video. So when I rotate, the disk is also rotated. And it's hard to see, but the multiple teeth around the disk. And here's um, a black box. And inside of it, we have opto trans receiver. And when the teeth crosses um, the, the sensor, we have a square waveform as an output. And by computing the edges uh, of this waveform, we can, um, we can compute the number of teeth that crosses, crossed through the sensor. Or in other words, we can uh, precisely measure the, the the position, the angular position of the motor. And we actually have two uh, sensors inside. So uh, using two of them, we can also identify the direction, the rotation, and to compute the number of edges of the square waveform, uh, the naive solution would be using external interrupts. But imagine that if we rotate really fast, we will end up with thousands of edges per, per second. And the external interrupts cannot handle it. But fortunately, uh, we can use uh, timers uh, to handle the, the encoders. The good thing with timers is that everything is implemented in a hardware level. So even if you have like thousands of edges per second, it can uh, catch all these events and you get really precise and reliable measurement of the encoder. And in the reference manual, I would like to show this um, uh, figure. Uh, the encoder has two outputs and we connect them to the channel one and the channel two of some timer. And in encoder mode, uh, the counter of the timer is incremented or decremented based on the signals coming from channel one and the channel two. And everything is already implemented in, in a hardware level. So what we need to do is to just to read the counter of the timer. So it will provide the angular position uh, of, of the motor. And next, let me show how to configure the timer in encoder mode using the Cubimix software. So I use timer three and within the mode and configuration, you just need to choose uh, encoder mode. And within the parameter settings, um, we have to choose the mode of the encoder. Uh, in my situation, I have two outputs from the encoder. Uh, that's why I choose this option. Uh, in, all, in, in, all, in your case, you might have an encoder with just the one output. In that situation, you need to choose either this or this option. Um, then uh, you need to connect the outputs of the encoder uh, to these pins, um, basically channel one and the channel two of the timer. Then you save the file. Then to start the encoder, we just call this function. And the second argument is channel all because we're gonna capture signals from both channels. Then uh, I wrote this uh, code uh, to uh, read uh, the, the count of the timer every one millisecond. So let's see how this code works. So I use timeline graph to plot the value of this variable, basically how the counter um, evolves. So uh, when I resume the code and I start rotating the motor, you can see how the value uh, is varying. Everything works fine except the overflow problem. The, the counter uh, operates properly between the zero and the ultra reload value. If we exceed from this uh, range, we have the overflow problem. So we need to solve this issue if we want to get proper uh, proper 
angular position and the angular velocity. In order to solve this overflow problem, I decided to compute the velocity in every iteration. For that purpose, I created this struct. So we have the angular velocity, angular position. I think it's pretty obvious why we need them. Also, we have this member just to keep the old value of the counter. This information is necessary to compute to estimate the angular velocity because the angular velocity is basically the difference between the new value and the old value of the counter. And every time when I want to update the angular position and the angular um, velocity, I just call this function. And when, I, when we run this uh, function first time, we just assume that the velocity is zero. Otherwise, we are inside of this else statement. And when the new value of the counter is equal to the, to the old value, uh, we have velocity equal to zero. I think it's pretty obvious because this means that there was no any movement. If uh, the new value of the counter is uh, greater than the old value, we need to consider these two cases. Within this register CR1, there is actually a bit that indicates um, the, the counting direction. So if the timer is counting down, it means that the overflow happened. Because a uh, timer is counting down, but the new value is greater than the old value. This might happen only if the overflow occurred. In that situation, we need to use the auto reload value to compute the velocity properly. So we use uh, this um, this, um, let's say, equation. Otherwise, we just uh, compute the velocity by taking um, the difference. Else, if the old value is greater than the, the new one, uh, we again check whether the timer is down counting or not. If yes, we just take the difference. If not, again, some um, overflow happened and um, we compute the velocity in, in, in this way. And after computing the velocity properly, we just add this uh, value to, to the position because um, position is basically the integral of the velocity. Then we keep um, the new value uh, as, the, as the old value because we need this information in, in the next iteration. So let's check the code. So I included the header file um, and I'm uh, calling this function to update the encoder uh, position, the velocity every one millisecond. And I am I'm assigning a position and velocity to, to these variables. So let's resume the code. So I will use again the timeline graph to plot um, the value of these variables. So I resume the code and I start rotating the motor. And um, the yellow uh, line shows the counter and we have many overflows. And the red one is the velocity of the, uh, of the, of the motor and it shows uh, the correct value. And the blue one is the angular position and it is incrementing in one direction and we, we don't have any uh, overflows happening. So it means that our code works correctly.